mic now? Yeah, okay, perfect. Uh, well, I guess I could still say good morning. It's almost afternoon. Uh, my name is Lisa Vinmergi, and I'll be talking to you about the topic of templates and, well, working with them. Uh, let's start this talk, and uh, basically, the first thing that I would like to talk about is where to begin. Many of us work with WordPress. Haha, <laughs> we're at a WordPress uh, conference. Um, but my, my main point here is that I work with other platforms, and I'm a designer. I don't think about the platform I work with. I think about the client I'm working with and their clients, so their end users. And more often than not, my work is to think about getting the idea from one or more person's minds and organizing it into a concept. So my work is just basically organizing ideas into something that we could discuss. It could be a picture, it could be um, a diagram. And through that, then we work towards a shared understanding of what we're going to actually, actually be creating. So when I talk to clients, I'm the first person to talk to a client usually is, what are we doing and why are we doing it? And these two questions are really difficult for some clients to um, answer. Um, many times they answer what they suspect they need to do. So, um, and uh, my job is to actually discuss with them uh, why they're doing it and then go on towards um, thinking about why, the, the, for example, a site redesign has been commissioned, or why they're tr what they're trying to accomplish with it. And then the final and the big question is, how are we going to accomplish this? Now, when, we, when I approach any problem, I kind of think of modular design. And, and to me, that's a mindset. It's not a... Uh, I would say it's not a way of working, but a way of thinking. And um, in so doing, in the end, what we basically are working towards when we're working with a WordPress um, project is to create a bunch of templates, reusable uh, elements, repeatable elements. And, uh, but before we get there, we usually have to uh, think about and uh, figure out what exactly we are building. And to do this, I tend to take what is now a very renowned known way of do working, a uh, content-first approach. And um, how I see this is that I analyze basically all the content that a, um, let's say, a current site has, or um, the content that will be coming onto a, uh, into a service. And when I think about this, I think about it as basically delineating all the whole architecture. And architecture is not usually a word that designers get to use, but I use it a lot. And it's because I work a lot with developers. And I'm not the person who makes an idea and then doesn't get to see it through. I work uh, very closely with developers. And uh, basically, for me, when you think about content and you think about the text, uh, images, videos, uh, the tweets, uh, the, um, the quote that you're going to get from a, a Facebook post. So we're talking about content in a very functional manner. Uh, you start thinking about the building blocks of what you're going to be creating, and then you get to the how. So I don't like to go to the how and say, we need template X, Y, and Z. Usually, I like to think about what we're creating for quite a long time before we get to um, discussing the how. Uh, and uh, finding patterns in the content is really um, the main, my main work, I feel. I'm looking for patterns, I'm discussing what the client is trying to do, and then establishing these patterns into some sort of um, uh, modules, elements. And uh, working from the bottom up. So instead of always working from the top down and saying, we have to have a marketing website, let's say, I kind of forget about that, and then I start looking at what exactly the person or the company or the client is trying to communicate and how they're having a dialogue with their, um, their clients, so the end user. 
So here are some examples of projects where modularity, in my opinion, is essential. And uh, these are not the only projects that are around, but these are quite a lot of projects where um, a modular uh, kind of way of thinking would be um, beneficial to everybody. So uh, you hear the, we need a new website. <laughs> I love that because it's kind of like, what, what does that mean, actually? Uh, that's just a means to an end. But uh, we need a redesign of our current website and or our current service. And that means that there is something existing and you have to really work at reorganizing things. And then we are changing our brand and are looking to create a new identity. And this is probably one of the worst ones because then you're talking about um, people are really in limbo about their content usually at this point. A client is trying to formulate who they are as well as what they are and how they're going to do it. Um, but in my opinion, the main problem here is the finding that balance between being holistic, so looking at things from a really big picture and staying in this high-level concept, and then delving into the details, so looking at that one little piece of user interface, uh, how we're going to um, manifest, let's say, uh, contact info. And that, can, that is a really big challenge for me as a designer, and uh, I don't do this by myself. Uh, the basic biggest thing that I actually think about when I'm thinking about this balance of holistic versus details is that the solution really lies in designing for two interfaces. And uh, basically the first one, which is the most typical one, is the public-facing service. So the user interface that we call user interface, everybody calls it that. Um, but um, for me, what I have come over come to um, accept as a reality and possibly sometimes the bane of my existence, the admin user interface. So this user interface is actually really important and it's basically what oh, everybody who's a developer in this room um, is creating. And they're not creating always the end user interface. They're creating an admin user interface that the administrator of the service can then input content and then, voila, all of a sudden we have a user user interface. And uh, this marriage for me is really important and I find that it's uh, basically figuring out the dependencies uh, as early as possible and figuring out your template structure and the repeatable nature of modules. It comes when you work between these two. So the public facing service here really is what most designers think about. They think about um, navigation, they think about uh, what is, let's say, where is the Twitter feed going to be, or um, how can I get an, uh, a contact form here? And we're not really many of us, not myself included anymore, but many of us very interested in this side. And this is a real big problem because the architecture actually happens on this side. And you have to think about you're also the person who's creating the content and inputting the content. And so when we do this, we actually design for all the, all the users and not just this uh, customer of this client. And uh, this is a real, this is a very big challenge, I find. And um, uh, I was just going to go through this because I have a limited amount of time. I wanted to take one example that I have found to be um, a very good example that shows how um, something can be, something so simple can become so complex. It com becomes complex every time I look at this. So contact info within a service. So WordPress is, uh, is pretty amazing in, as, an, as, uh, as it's grown into a CMS and uh, the possibilities that are available to us to make dynamic content and looking up content and having one specific database where we could put, for example, con contact info. So you can create a template that lists all the contact details, and uh, this template can be reused multiple times and uh, include a subset of contacts, let's say. And uh, then you can go to the point where you're 
discussing, but what happens when you notice that there might be a need to embed some of this contact information into, uh, let's say, outside the traditional contact info page. So you don't just have this one place. You have business cards that you want to embed in other pages. And uh, they should be displayed differently in different cases. So the modularity here is that the data is the same, the content is the same, but we're going to completely blow it out of proportion and make the business cards on one page look like fancy and have a picture, a name, and title, and phone number. But in other places, we might even have a quote saying, I'm like uh, employee of the month or something. So there's all kinds of different ways of displaying this information. And my biggest question nowadays is how will this affect the admin user interface? Because I work with those clients who will be inputting the content into this system, and they have usually a disconnect between the, um, the actual end user interface and their admin user interface. They don't usually understand how they are connected. So for me, um, as the person who's usually discussing things with the client and trying to open these issues up at, as early as possible, I have uh, discovered that pair work saves the day. I know it sounds really cheesy and simple and simplified, but I kind of like to simplify things for myself. And really, what I've noticed is that fleshing out ideas at an early stage and uh, sharing between the designer and developer, if we want to put ourselves into those categories, um, is essential. And I have a disclaimer there. If you are the designer and the developer in your team, you are the one and the same, I suggest you go find someone to talk to, because you cannot do this by yourself. Many times we assume we can do things, but just having a sounding board, uh, somebody you can talk to, it just changes things dramatically. And um, you should spar with people. And uh, then hold sanity checks. And I have trademarked this now <laughs> for myself. I call them sanity checks because frequently I ask questions like, wait, what if I do this, or what if I uh, make this uh, contact info kind of something that would only show up in the mobile view of this template at 9 p.m., let's say, because that's when we want people to call this person. So these ideas are to um, get some idea of how things feel and work, but not to crush them. Uh, and uh, this is where the developer really shines and can really be a partner to the designer and not the other way around, actually. Uh, always keep in mind how the public user interface translates to the admin user interface and vice versa. And this is very, very important because these are the moments when you kind of get the disconnect. Now, when I say work with a developer and designer, um, I don't mean this. <laughs> So, I'll give you a moment to read it. It's one of my favorite comics. And um, these are the kinds of things that happen when you kind of expect somebody to have all the answers and expect them, and you don't do sanity checks. This should have been done a long time ago. I, um, I totally recommend you guys reading the uh, blurb for this. I'm uh, finishing up on my time, so uh, I'll just go forward. Uh, so basically, in the end, pragmatism is what, um, what I would suggest for any kind of modular design or modular project. Be transparent with your team and your client, and that's one thing that I have noticed very often is the client is missing from the team. Uh, show your client the relationship between the end user interface and the admin user interface. Don't um, be afraid to actually uh, expose this to them, that there are relationships between the two and why or how something can be done. And last of all, while not all problems can be solved at once, nurturing uh, working practices that naturally uncover problems uh, as early in the process as possible is really the way to go. So that was my 12 and a half minutes. I went over time. Thank you.